So I'm just gonna push the lock in to simulate it closing the door. When I lock it, this should go in, but it doesn't. On the outside, you can see that that moves. There you go. There's one actuator out the door. This bottom part snaps off, but I bent it down. I've heard that that can actually solve your problem. Prise this out gently. There you go, it's spinning now. Let's see if I can unlock it and open the door. Yeah! <laughs> Fixed. Maybe I'm a gangster too. So I'm just going to push the lock in to simulate it closing the door and if you see here now when I lock it this should go in but it doesn't. I can hear that the motor's moving which is good there should be two little tiny motors inside and I was hoping not to have to take the actuator out and repair it. My gut feeling and I'm hoping it's going to be this is that the lever that pulls on that motor isn't connected somehow to this maybe it's come off maybe it needs to be adjusted so i'm going to take the panel off so if i close it now if i unlock this it doesn't come out but i can hear it making a noise down here so uh, let's get the panel off so i haven't done this before but i've certainly worked on enough cars over the years so let's have a look there should be one in here Yep, by the looks of it, this panel hasn't come off before. You can tell because there's always a little telltale mark. So that's a good sign, that's a good sign. It's a 2006 car. There's a little Phillips in there. So, you know, things wear out. You've got to respect your elders. I bet you there's one behind this Range Rover sign. There's a little Phillips in there. There's probably one behind there, and there's obviously one in there. So let's crack on. Just underneath there, there's a little seam. I don't know if that comes off. I'm gonna break it. Aha, there you go. Wow, I managed to not break it, I think. Clip here, clip here, so it kind of lifts up like that. Good. And there's the main the main two screws. Again, two um, posi drives in there. in here. That's the longest one in the bottom there. Is there any more? Uh, I don't see them. Right. Oh, there's one here. There's a big main one in here. Okay, that's out. magnet there. That's the main one on that one. That one's out. And there's two here. One, two. They're both the same. Okay, so they're the two. Oh, apparently they're not. Yes, they are. They're both the same. Right. So let's see. There'll be poppers on the bottom. 
and I've never done this before, so I like doing these videos. It gives you a real indication on what it's actually like to remove something for the first time. Give you the confidence to try it yourself. Yeah, how do I get in here? Start at the bottom, eh? Been off before. There'll be little white poppers all the way along this. I'm sure of it. I can see them from here. Take your time. So far, so good. This is going to lift up now. Oh, maybe I've got to take this off. Aha. Okay. Yeah. I definitely don't think this has been off before. Right, a little light connection on the bottom. Let's show you what's going on. So, I'm going to undo this cable here somehow. And then there's a light switch at the bottom as well. So, how do I get that cable out? Um, See something moving. Take the glass off. Right, I'll talk you through it. This is what I've had to do. There's two little clips inside. Just in there, you can see that I've got my little pry bar and you simply lever the back part away. There's also one on that side as well. It's really a two-man job, but once you release one side, you can kind of pull it up and take the window out. So now I've got the window out of the way. I've undone these screws and bolts here. I'm gonna take this and hopefully move this out of the way so that I can try and have a look at the actuator. And now I've got more space to get in there. like inside. So when I pull the door handle on the outside you can see that that moves 
and the actuator I'm going to try and move it out now out this little gap <laughs> one actuator I had to do a little bit of uh, sneaky clever unhooking there but I'll show you what I've done so this is how I disconnected the actuator without removing the outside door handle you have a little clip here and you just unclip it and then this just does a half a turn and comes off let's unplug this thing first let's get it on the bench I can see what I'm bloody doing then So I managed to do it without taking the outside door handle off. I'll show you how to do that. If you just bear with, and do these little clips. Okay. Oh, blimey. So this one here, this little white lever here has been a lot of talk on this, that this bottom part snaps off. And if you look at this metal uh, little hook here, I've actually bent that down. This was nice and uh, straight, as in that flat edge there, but I bent it down because um, I've heard that that can actually solve your problem. But for me, it didn't. At the back here, this is where this can snap off. And um, usually that's, that's the fix, but it just doesn't seem to work for me. I can hear the micro switches inside. Um, there's a little bit of wear here and I don't know if it's something that's catching maybe it's just sticky but I can actually hear the relay uh, the little micro switches inside so I'm going to open it up and have a look um, I'm going to put a bit of lubricant on there as well it seems a little dry but definitely there's there's a there's a sort of a wear mark there um, so. yeah. Yeah, see, it's not going all the way back to that position. It seems to stay like that. And it needs to lock into that back position for it to work properly. So here you can see if I pull the cable, this is the locking lever. If I pull it and then stop, it doesn't go back into that last position. I have to push it closed like that seems a little bit stiff don't know if that's normal I'm gonna try bending this down just a little bit more just to see if it will finish the last little bit of travel I'm gonna ruin my pliers I think. maybe I thought I bent it and it wasn't actually bending I didn't realize it was that tough That's a bit better. Right, let's see what I'm just going to use the lever now. No, still not going back to that last position, is it? Really isn't. Right, so here we are. This is the little micro switch in here I can hear. See the tiny little switch inside? So they are all working, but I've got a, oh, that's interesting. Is that motor okay? So that is, I think your deadlock, but this one, this gear here, 
It's turning all right. I think that's, how do I test to make sure that's working? Let's have a look. Prize this out gently. This is the motor which I thought might have a an issue with it. And that's a little worm gear there. Yeah, grease smells okay. So the contacts are down there. I wonder what the I need to see what sort of voltage that would be. Surely it'd be 12 volts. I wonder if I can put 12 volts on that. What do you think? Is that 12 volts? I don't know. But if I can get the motor to turn, then at least I know. If it doesn't, then it would be uh, a replacement motor. So excuse the crudeness, but uh, I've got six volts on this little battery charger here to test this and see. I thought I'd keep it low and it spins. See? Oh, it was spinning. What happened there? Stop now. There you go. It does feel a bit rough though. It stopped again. Just make sure that I've got a voltage. There you go, eight volts, just about. Okay. And it's kind of temperamental. It's not always spinning when I put this in. Uh, there you go, spinning now. Just try it the other way, just in case. Careful not to touch these two. There you go. Spins the other way as well. I think that motor is all right, which means it's got to be the setting, surely. The uh, it's got to be one of the contacts. So that's working all right. Right, let's not play with that too much in case I'm putting the wrong voltage through it. I'll just give the uh, contacts a bit of a clean with just some electrical contact cleaner. Okay. The only thing to do is put it back in and see how we go. I actually think it's um, a mechanical issue. I think something's just not quite going all the way into position. But let's get it back in again and see. So I've also cleaned these two as well. Those are the contacts. Um, and I've, I've tried my best to sort of get the grease and put it where it should be as well. Feels smooth enough. Maybe get a little bit and put it on that gear there. So I've tested the other motor. That's also nice and strong. Did it just now. Um, so I'm pretty certain. So I'm pretty certain it's this. I'm going to just open it up and have a look. Gut feeling is if there's brushes in there, then they may just be worn. But I want to get this back on the car and test it. And I haven't got another motor I'll have to order one let's see let's see if we can get this open and see what's inside oh there you are oh blimey whoa that doesn't look too good in there does it there's a little disc thing there what's that Tiny little disc, I think that was on there. Well, 
looking at that commentator, which is this thing here. It's not too bad. It's pretty damn dirty though. Let's give that a clean. Okay. So these brushes here. <laughs> these are the little brushes. There is, there's, I don't even know if they're brushes. Surely they're not brushes. They're tiny. What I am going to do. God. A little gunk in there. What I'm going to do is give these a little tweak, a little bend. And I'm hoping it will help with the contact. Let's get that clean as well. think <laughs> I don't know um, there we go yeah that's okay right let's push that back home like that Test it first, see how we go. Oh, It does sound or feel at least like it it doesn't have a lot of torque you know it'll stop without too much effort See a bit of smoke come out of that. Well, I think it needs a new one, but let's put it back on the car and see if it does anything. Need to remember how this goes back together. So to give you a better understanding of actually what's going on in here, when you enclose the, when you press the lock, 
then this little arm here which sits on those two motors moves that noise that you're hearing when i go click click with the remote is this is moving like this backwards and forwards and that lock that uh, motor there is 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 moving this one so it moves backwards and forwards but i think the problem is this motor so i think we need to change it because what should happen is this should spin and see how all the mechanism comes to life so as that spins round, it engages the lock, and that's that's not that's not happening. So I think that motor is what's needing replaced. That's all it is, and then everything would work. If you look down inside there, as I move it, you can see the lock uh, also moving as well. So, so now I need to put this cover on. slide on there okay that just goes back in what was in there anything in there no, I don't think so So I was putting the actuator back together again and I couldn't quite remember how something went so I quickly rewound and had a look. I also looked online at a few photos and I've noticed in all this time there's a little tiny spring that's missing um, and it's maybe the reason why uh, this is not behaving as it should. So just here there should be a spring which pulls this tight and it's that last little bit for the micro switch this is what I was having problems with. So I need to see if I can find something to, you know, um, I haven't got a spring and I haven't seen it anywhere. I don't believe it was here to start with. So I need to try and make something now that will push that over. Here's my springs. I don't think I've got that type of spring. It was like a, um, like a little coil spring. I've only got these tension types of springs. Okay, so here's my little improvisation. A little box of springs there, and I managed to find one which was just nice. I put a couple of screws in. So now when I move this, it pulls that white lever all the way back, how it should be. But before there used to be a spring in here and that was missing when I took it off. So maybe, maybe it'll work. There you go. Now when I pull the lever, it goes all the way home. So let's see how we get on with that. So it's back on the car. It's definitely making all the right noises, but that's how it was before. And that little click noise that you hear is the little white uh, arm. But for some reason, this mechanism here, this should be moving, but it's not, and I don't know why. So I think I have to buy a new actuator. Oh well, let's get it back on the car at least. Oh, finally it's getting cold. You know what, the door's back on, the actuator's back on, it's exactly the same issue now that I had before I started. So yes, I haven't actually fixed the problem, however, I know what the problem is. I would have fixed it if I had another actuator. So in summary, the little motor inside that when I put the power on in the garage was actually working. It was working, but it hadn't got the right strength because the little uh, brushes inside were wearing away. And from reading up online, 
that motor is the most common issue for the actuators. I was just going to buy a new motor for a few pounds, but I thought I think I'll just best get the whole actuator. They're not very expensive. You can get used ones online for maybe about 30, 40 pounds in the UK. What's that? About 40, 50 bucks in the States. And also they do sort of uh, reconditioned ones as well. So that's what I'm going to do. But most importantly, if this video has helped you understand how you actually can take that actuator off without having to take the door handle off on the outside, without having to take the whole of the mechanism for the window, um, because I showed you how you can remove that window. I've never done it before, but I worked it out. How you can remove the window by just those two little clips at the bottom. Just take your time and you can pull it up through the top of the door. So if it helps you with that, then, then my, my job's done. That's what the whole point I do these videos, to try and give you a little encouragement and advice and help. Um, so I'm going to do another video and I will promise you this, it will be half the time, half the tools. I've done the learning curve. I know what I'm doing now. I just got to wait for the bits to arrive. So this panel I've taken off now a couple of times and I'll guarantee that I can remove this with half the tools and half the time because I know what I'm doing. I need to replace the actuator today and I bought a used one from a company called eBay. You might have heard of them. So we're going to get this and put it on. Let's get into it. This is probably the trickiest one. There's a little seam and you have to try and get a small tool into the gap like that. And now you can lift it up. This comes off. There's one screw in here a little cover let's take that off just a little pop-off cover it might come all the way off it might stay on there there's a little tag if it comes all the way off it doesn't matter screw that okay and there's two screws in here your tool again start from the bottom and just work your way around the mirror switch will probably come off like it's done there You can actually leave the switch on you don't need to remove this mirror switch if you don't want to and now this up here will pop out this way you can leave the rubber strip on if you want to and these are the clips here that then pop into there so when you put it back on you push it in that way on the inside here there's a little clip you just push that in and then the whole thing comes out with this plastic cover on undo these three plugs now for the windows There's one more on the bottom here, which is for your bottom light there. And that's it. You can now remove the panel. 
Next step is to move the window up, undo all of these bolts. I'm going to move the regulator here, but keep it in place. I'm just going to move it to the side. That allows me access in that way. So keep the window in the lower position. I'll show you why. First of all, start by removing all these 10 mil bolts. These two at the top are just nuts. Okay. Now if you remove this rubber here, you can actually get, get inside there and you can see the clips at the bottom of the window. Same on this side. Just remove this rubber and it gives you access inside there to get to the bottom of the window that's been clipped in. And then I use a couple of little hook tools to unclip it and a torch. So just inside there you can see what I'm doing. I'm just moving the back here away and that will, that will allow the window to be able to come out of that socket and then the same on the other side. Start, start with one side and lift it first. That's one side lifted. And you can see inside there that the bottom of that window if I lift it is now free from the engaged teeth there. So what I like to do at the top where I've moved it, I put this little screwdriver in here so it stops it falling back down. That's the window free. So now the window's free. Before I remove the whole thing, but this time I'm going to leave it in place. I'm just going to hold it with a bit of gaffer tape. Right, that's not going anywhere so that's kept the window so that keeps the window up now I can push the window regulator in and that way and that's all you need to do now I can get my hand in and I can get to the actuator that sat inside easy As I said, when I did this first time, it probably took me over, over an hour. This is probably taking me six minutes. I've always said, when you know what you're doing, you've got that learning curve, you do it half the time with half the tools. Get your torch. <clears throat> Undo these screws. I'm going to take this last screw out, the actuator will drop down a bit, but that's okay. Just like that. Now bring it back up. And this is the one that I've just bought. So this here goes to the outside door handle. And this one is that cable there and what I'm trying to do carefully is unclip this so inside the door I need to do the following so what I'm trying to do is you just pop off the one of the corners like that 
and once you've got that clip off then I can rotate that just a quarter of a turn and it comes off goes back in and hooks in likewise so that's what I'm going to do inside the door and by doing that it saves having to take the whole of the outside door handle off I think it saves time Do the electric plug to the actuator. There you go, there's one actuator out the door. Old and reconditioned, or actually, it's just a genuine second hand one. So, my existing one, the problem I had. At the back here, this is the one I've just bought and there's a little spring on it. This one didn't have it. And also it's just a lot stiffer. So I'm hoping this new one here is going to be uh, going to fix the problem. And also inside here there's a motor which wore out and I showed you that on my last video. So let's get this on and fingers crossed. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to see if anything happens when I lock and unlock the door. Okay. There you go. Oh. So let's just pretend I've closed the door. Let's push the lock here. And now I can lock it. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Let's do that again. Unlock. Lock. Beautiful. That's what I didn't have before. Oh, I can watch that all day. <laughs> Let's get on the car and hopefully that'll fix my problem. Just pay attention to this little area here. Don't put too much force and move this wire too much because on my old one there, you can see I ended up breaking it and then it's it doesn't fit the same. And there's a little tie wrap on there as well, which is how it was from factory. So. Just keep it as it is there like that. And also make sure that spring doesn't come out. It fits in that orientation. I've got to remember I've got to connect the outside door handle here. I've just set a tape my torch there so I can see what I'm doing. on that's good that was easier than I thought there's the connection there just pushed it back on you have to kind of work with one hand and the bottom little hook there which will open the door from the outside so carefully now without putting too much stress on the lock thread this through this little hole which is for the internal door handle and then just bring the little rubber grommet back through. So make sure the plug is on. And 
all you've got to do now is put these three little star bolts back in. Right, in all sense and purposes, that is the actuator in place. So I'm going to close the door now and let's see if I can open it from the inside and the outside. In fact, that's the door just locked because if you leave it too long, it goes into auto lock mode. <clears throat> Right, a moment of truth. Let's lock the car and see if I can open it. Hopefully that's locked. Oh, beautiful. She's locked. She is locked, right. Now, for bonus points, let's see if I can unlock it and open the door. Fixed. Right, panel back on, job done. I think it's beer o'clock. There's the end of the lever for the lock which will be on the inside and watch what happens when I lock it. She goes down and she goes up. That's exactly what wasn't happening before. So next we've got to do is we've got to get this glass back onto the window actuator. Just make sure that you've tightened everything up here. You've got your three bolts in there, you fed your cable through, and you've got your um, outer door handle connected. So move the window actuator, and you want to line up these. You want to line up these two bolts here into the top two holes, like so. Put the nuts on so that they don't come loose. Just do it hand tight for now. Okay. Now very carefully take the tape off and lower the window down and it should just click into place without actually lining anything up. You don't need to look in there or undo any of the clips. As it comes down the window is going to go into the slot and it's going to hook in place and that's it. That's all, of the, that's all that's needed to hold the window in place. So just bring it down and you'll hear the click as you move the window down. Take your time. That click there, that's your window in. Now just double check, get your torch, and just make sure inside that the fingers come down inside those teeth. There you go and you can just about see it in there. Okay, you can put the rubbers back on now. That's it. Now put the rest of the bolts back in. What I like to do now is just test the window before you put the door panel back on. Just 
let's put those three connectors back in for the windows and take your time when you first use the window just make sure that it's it's not making any scraping noises sounds okay okay all good connect the bottom light that's the bottom light is on now we need to take this plastic clip off from the old unit and pop it on the new one so you put it up and you twist it slightly and it will come out of its little housing like that fitment is obviously just in reverse so push it through the hole at an angle twist it and then make sure you get the little barrel to go into this uh, slide here and that then clicks down into place and this has now got to marry up with the door lock just here so when I move the door that's got to then slot into where that barrel is that's it okay and now just move the lever on the door to make sure that it's locking. Just make sure that that's actually working with the lock. Right, by the way, the mirror just has one clip on the bottom. On the mirror assembly here, this little hook here goes onto the door trim. And then on the top, this little plastic clip here holds the top on. Just give it a little push. That's it. That's all that holds it on. Right, now that the panel's on, albeit without the screws, I'm gonna check the door thoroughly to make sure everything is working as it should. So let's lock it and see. All good. Unlocked. Good. Let's see if it opens from the inside. Lovely. So if I lock the car now, I'm here. That's gone in. If I unlock the button, she opens. Lock. Unlock. Beautiful. Can I open the door? Yes, I can. So I think we're sorted. I think we have fixed the car. Windows. That's all good. Yeah. So all I've got to do now, put the fixings on, put this trim on, and that's it, done. The longest screw goes in this outer door one here. And then one more screw behind the actual handle. And then lastly, the little plastic cover. And last, but by no means least, is a little trim. Goes on from the top. Just clips into place. Job done.